Hello everyone, and in this video, we're going to start building our AOU. Now, in the last video, we talked about all the different circuits we're going to have in our AOU, and some of the tricks we're going to use to get all those circuits working efficiently. So, in light of all that, I think it makes the most sense to start with the adder. You can start anywhere you want in the AOU, but again, I'm going to start with the adder, because I think based on our personal design, it's going to make the most sense to start there. Now, before we actually start laying down blocks, there's a couple things I want to talk about, really quickly. First off, I'd like to say thank you to Hank9600 on the RDF, because he taught me a whole bunch of different tricks you can use to make adders really, really efficient. And if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be able to build anything anywhere near this good in terms of just... yeah. So thank you very much, because otherwise this adder would not be happening right now. So thank you, Hink. And the other reason I'm thanking Hink is because I have tried building my own design of an adder using his sort of bag of tricks, I suppose you could say. And, well, it turned out pretty much identical to his design. And that wasn't intentional, but I think it only deserves a thank you, since really mine only differs in a couple of different areas, so... It, most of the adder is his design. Well, originally, I suppose. So thank you very much to Hank. Without him, this wouldn't be happening. So, with that all out of the way, let's start laying down the blocks. Okay, so now, there's a couple of considerations you'll want to take into account when you're building this. First off, the AOU in the grand scheme of the CPU. Now, we're going to talk about how the CPU is designed, but just to spoil all that, which we're going to go off later and just jump to the end, our adder in the grand scheme of the CPU is going to be near the top of the entire CPU. So in light of this, you'll want to start building this adder relatively high. You want at least 35 blocks clearance at bare minimum from wherever you're starting your build. And I know I'm recommending a bare minimum of 35. As you can see, I'm starting with 66 just to be on the safe side. So yeah, 35 should be enough, but make sure to give yourself plenty of room underneath, because the adder is going to be pretty much at the top of the CPU when it's done. And secondly, you're going to make sh you need to make sure you have all the necessary building supplies. I have them all in my inventory. This is how I'm going to have them laid out when I'm actually building. Actually, just kidding, it's not. It's actually going to be laid out like this. And yeah, you can lay them out however you feel most comfortable. And with that all out of the way, let's lay down the first block and let's start going ahead and building the adder. Okay, so we've gone ahead and we've gotten our first block. And what you do from here is a little bit of a matter of taste. And here's what I mean. No matter what you do, you're pretty much going to need an XNOR gate. The difference is what XNOR gate you use. Because you pretty much have two options. You can build a pistonless XNOR, which will be two ticks. Or you can build a piston-based one, which will be 1.5 ticks but you're going to have to take into some account some considerations where the adder can screw up and derp, and it can break your entire machine if that happens. So, in our case, we want to have the fastest adder we can reasonably get, so we're going to want to use the 1.5 tick XNORs. But, again, that introduces the problem with the derping, and that really can't be helped using traditional XNORs. So, Here's the way I'm going to do it. What I'm going to do is, this is going to be the first piston, and over here, I'm going to have another piston. So what's happening here is, rather than only having one piston, the only piston that's necessary to get to 1.5 ticks, I'm using two pistons. And I think, cool, why does that make any difference at all? Simple. So we're using pistons for both parts of the XNOR gate. What this is going to do is it's going to make it so that the timing is, is completely consistent on both inputs. No matter what input we use, it's going to take the delay of a piston. Unlike the other design where one takes one tick and the other takes a piston delay, this one is completely consistent because you have pistons in both cases. So that consistency will save us a whole bunch of that huge trouble we would have had if we didn't go ahead and do this. So yeah. Now, we have the issue of they start retracted, and we want them to start extended. 
So, the way you do this, really you can do it any way you want, but the way I'm going to do it is, first off, I'm going to place a torch right here. There we go, that's the first one, and this will be my first input. And for the second one, I'm going to place my torch right here. And there's my second input. So, and if you notice, well, after I connect these up, right now, this makes a NOR gate. Almost, except for the fact that that's a bud switch, but that's okay, that actually won't be a problem in the end. Because right now, we have to add the X to XNOR. Now, you notice, it's 1 when both are extended. So we have to simply make sure that when both pistons are, when both inputs are on, they extend both pistons. That's a lot easier than you might think, and that's where this butt switch is going to come in handy. So I place this here, that's going to update the piston every single time. So this one will make sure this piston's extended, even if this is off. I should say. So, yeah. This will always extend this piston, and retract this piston, and this, eventually, will always retract this piston, and always extend this piston. Now the question is, how do we extend this piston with this wire? And this is going to be a little bit tricky. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some glowstone logic, and I'm going to move this up, and I'm going to change it to a bud. It's going to do the exact same thing, as you can see. The only difference is now it's done with a bud. So, yeah, and that's because to make sure I don't have any wiring conflicts. So I'm going to use glowstone logic to move it past here, and now I'm going to have to somehow get power from this wire to this piston. I'm just going to do that simply like that. Nothing fancy, just like that. And, if our logic is correct, this should make an XNOR gate. So, flip this, there you go, and flip this, and when both are on, yeah. So there you go, that logic works. So, and again, just to make sure you understand, when I flip one, it will turn off the power to one, and it will send power to the other. So yeah, very simple. So that one retracts, and making sure that one's extended. That one retracts, make sure that one's extended. And if you flip both of them, what's well, extending both of them? Again, because that wire is sending power to that one, and that's sending power to that one. So very simple. And... Okay. So, just making sure that can work. Alright, so now we've made a very, very small XNOR gate. 1, 2, 3, 4, by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Whoop. 6. 4 by 6 by 2. One issue you may notice is this is not tileable. If we want a too wide AOU, or too wide adder at this stage, well, this won't do. So, we're going to have to stagger it. Now, the way I'm going to do this is I'm just going to stack it with world edit. And one thing I should emphasize at this point is you don't have to build this exactly like I'm doing. It's recommended until you get the idea of how this works down, if you're going to be using the same general concept. But you can really build this however you like, as long as the logic works. So yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, back to the main point at hand. As you can see, both these wires are crossing over. And that's not good. We don't want that to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the ultimate staggering trick, and that is to raise this one up one, and to block it off like this. And this staggers perfectly. This wiring combination right here, with the wire and the upper wire and the blocks, pretty much the ultimate staggering combination. You can pretty much never go wrong when you do something like this. So yeah, and with that, we now have functional XNORs for our adder. So yeah, I, just to prove that it doesn't actually conflict, that one works. And, if I add levers, if, that one, and there. They both work, and they don't interfere with one over. So yeah, there you go. One final thing you might want to take note of before we go. This XNOR gate is not 1.5 ticks, nor is it 2 ticks. In fact, it's 2.5 ticks. And here's why. You notice that both times that this needs to turn off, it requires a piston. Anytime this changes, it requires a piston. Pistons, in general, are regarded as 1.5 ticks. So, we have 1.5 ticks here. 
Now both of the pistons are powered by a torch, which are turned off by our inputs. So, in fact, since torches are one tick, if you do basic math, 1 plus 1.5, or the other way, 1 plus 1.5, 2.5 ticks. And you might be thinking right now, wow, Benny, what have you done here? You, you just went through all this effort to build this big, fancy XNOR gate, and it's slower than both of your alternatives. Well done! You're a genius. Well, actually, I am a genius. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm not a genius. But there is a little bit of a trick that goes with this, I guess you could say. What's really important here is not the fact that this is 1.5, or not the fact that this is one, <laughs> not the fact that this is 2.5 ticks, but where it's 2.5 ticks. And here's what I mean by that. If I flip this lever right here, torch turns off, one tick, piston retracts. Pistons retract instantly. So, well, at least in terms of redstone delay. So, this one calculation right here was one tick, because it's only the delay of the torch. This right here, if I turn this on, it turns off the torch, piston instantly retracts. Again, one tick. The only time where this is 2.5 ticks, in fact, is when you turn these off. So when I turn this off, or when I'm on the falling edge, this, that's the only time where it's actually 2.5 ticks. And I think, yeah, cool. So what? Who cares if it's on the falling edge? It's still 2.5 ticks. Yeah, but all of our rising edges are 1 tick. And here's the thing. After we build the adder, I'm sort of jumping ahead here, but after we build the adder, we're going to build a device that makes it so that the falling edge never actually happens during actual computation. So the end result of that is, the fact that this is 2.5 ticks on the falling edge, who cares? It doesn't matter, because that's never going to happen during a computation. So we can have our falling edge be almost arbitrarily long, if you make it long enough it actually will have an effect, but you don't have to worry about the falling edge length too much. So, for the purpose of the addition operation, because of that device we're going to add later, this is actually going to function as one tick, because the only case this works, that, well, there's never the falling edge, and the rising edge is always one tick. So yeah, there you go. Just thought you might want to know that. So yeah. So thank you, I hope you enjoyed. This is the XNOR that will go into the first part of our adder. In the next video, we will be turning this into a half adder, and possibly start working on the carry system. And maybe, if we're lucky, we might even finish the adder. So thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.